it's not about coming and saying, this is what I'm going to do. It's actually doing it. It's taking action. It's being that modeled behavior because that's what good leadership is. Um, and, and it's okay. Cause it's still going to like, life's still going to go on, even if it, it doesn't happen. So first it's like recognizing, like it's, it's going to move on. What I tend to do is, you know, Daniel, I'm kind of a Pilates person <laughs> and, and it takes me about less than two minutes to do a Pilates roll down, which is basically I start and I kind of roll my body down. And at the same time I breathe and it's, reconnecting my breath to my body. And what that does is um, I have a Pilates instructor that says, don't worry about anything unless that's where your feet are. So I remember when I do my roll down and my breath that I am here, this is my experience. And I kind of, it slows time down for a second and it slows down your heartbeat and it reconnects your body with your experience that you're having right now. And it takes less than two minutes. And you do it, you could do it at standing at your desk, you can do it sitting at your desk. Everyone needs two minutes, you know, like you can coach somebody in two minutes. You can definitely breathe in two minutes. And and so what I'm hearing from you is also a focus on the physical, because too often we are sitting, we're in meetings, it's cerebral instead of the movement. And we are built to move. Yes. And we need to be able to move in ways. And that does so much good in so many, so many ways for us as yeah. well. Absolutely. Movement, I think, is probably the best thing uh, that we can do for our bodies and our mind to help um, create energy to then uh, cut against burnout, but then also to um, move past that burnout into a belonging state is, which is how can I stop thinking more about what my experience is, but how am I making sure that the experience of people around me is better? Cause that's what we all, that's what good leaders do. Okay. So I'm going to play this out and I'm going to go a little extreme, but I want your reactions as we do this. So if I'm a leader and I'm hearing, we've been talking for what, 30 minutes thus far. If I go back to my team and say, okay, everybody, we, we want to build and strengthen belonging. So we're going to be doing creative stuff and we're going to be focusing on movement. Now, admit it, that, that's not necessarily what, but that's essentially what we're, what we're saying. What are ways that a manager or leader can translate that so that people are like, oh, oh, that's, that's a good point. You know, how, how do you, how do you communicate this? Oh. Well, I would love a manager to come after that and say that. I mean, that would be <laughs> ideal. It's never happened in my life. But I would honestly say the easiest thing that I would recommend is, um, you know, think of little things that you're going to do already in your day that you can turn into a movement activity. Okay. So, you know, I, uh, I have a team meeting and we're virtual. What, how different would it be is if we had a virtual team meeting and you said, hey, I'm going to go on a walk. Anyone can join me if they would like. This is not going to be a Zoom call. This is just us talking. And I'm going to go on a walk around the neighborhood. So we're like physically moving and walking around and talking. So it's like what we used to do is a walk and talks when we were all in the office. Well, this can be a virtual walk and talk. I, I mean, that's the best thing to do. And that's going to already encourage. It's, it's not about coming and saying, this is what I'm going to do. It's actually doing it. It's taking action. It's being that modeled behavior um, because that's what good leadership is. Even if it's uncomfortable for the leader, because you know there are certain norms that we think of as a leader. I, I don't yeah. say this, or I do say what what you're suggesting is to kind of begin to break that mold Absolutely. and to suggest and do things that are maybe more traditionally outside of the typical workplace ideal because either it's hybrid virtual okay we need to live that way and live and 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 lead differently yeah. yeah i think being a leader we should always be a little uncomfortable i i mean that just shows that you have some authenticity you're trying different things you're portraying the 
the behavior that you want your people to have, you know? So like, I don't think it's, I think um, trying new things and going out is part of that, that leadership experience. And it's part of being uncomfortable, but also remembering that everyone's uncomfortable. That's part of the human experience in itself. And so I think being a leader, you can tap into these really cool opportunities for you to be uncomfortable, but then also share that, 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 um, that, uh, that feeling with others as well, but also showing it, you know, that's how you yeah. start to spark belonging. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as folks are listening to this, feel free to uh, chime in with your own questions on these topics or others. Feel free to just uh, enter them in as you wish. Um, Tim, let's talk for a moment about identity because oftentimes that plays a part in terms of do I feel like I belong or do I feel like I, I don't belong and, and how to invite, how to help people look at their own authentic self and to show up in a way that they can then contribute in meaningful ways. Otherwise, they can easily feel not included. How does somebody go about the process of kind of reflecting on themselves? And then the other part is, how can a manager help shape and influence in positive ways that identity as well? So both angles themselves and a manager or leader to help them with this yeah. identity question. Oh man, when you were talking about that, the first thing that I went back to was the first time that I ever got a 360. That was that was the first time that I started to do some of that own self-reflection. So uh, now as someone who facilitates 360s, I always say this is the best gift you will ever receive because feedback is a gift, right? Um, and so that was the first thing that I went to is, um, you know, I, if you haven't gotten a 360, I mean ask your manager to have one and I'm not any, any of them. I mean, we have great ones here. Uh, and, and we have, uh, but like, I think that would be like my first step of like recognizing my own self-awareness and then asking also my direct reports, um, you know, opening a conversation with them on, um, on how they're feeling um, as well as a 360 is a great way to start if you're not a big feeler um, or comfortable talking about feelings as a leader. Um, a 360 is a, is a great place to start there. Um, I would say identity, uh, the, you know, this is something that we didn't really talk about in business when I first started working, you know, uh, and it's really hard to, as, as a leader, to be like, wow, I have to worry about you know, my responsibilities, and then I have to worry about everyone else's, you know, like, that's really hard. Um, and so the first place that I go is thinking about what would it be if somebody cared the way I wanted them to care about me? And going through like your own self and having some of that self-reflection being like, when was there a time that I didn't feel comfortable? And then start to identify, is that happening inside of the organization? Um, because it's probably something related to that person's identity or the, who they show up as. We also can look at data. We know that um, that burnout and belonging is affected to our BIPOC community more than any other community inside of an organization. So knowing that we already have people through data that is telling us that they are uh, that they are more likely to. Um, feel uh, or to feel burnout and belonging. So let's also make sure that we are aware of the data and other things that we know as leaders um, who are the most susceptible to these challenges because of their own identity that they didn't choose to be themselves or they didn't choose. We're all, we know none of us had a choice. Right. It's, it's how we, we arrive in this world and then we work through this and it's for others to then help support and recognize as well as we do it together. Yes. And what, what I'm also hearing from you is none of this is an individual sport. It is a team sport to be able to then be effective, not only in the organizational world, but at life and to be able to recognize that this combining this interactivity is, is a positive thing. And it's actually a solution to help us become better ourselves Absolutely. as well as, as the organization. Absolutely. Ego sees problems, consciousness sees solutions, right? And that's basically what we're going for right there 
is that as this is the new way that we are going to be having to lead because the generations that are next and next and next are talking more and more about this. They are smarter than, than I was, you know, they're better at it than we are. Um, and so it's now our turn to upskill our behavior so that we can better communicate and be better leaders about talking about, um, you know, belonging and making sure that we are um, the better, better, better stewards of the business, better stewards of people and better stewards of the earth. Like that is the challenge of this new leadership um, paradox.